These are in listen-only mode. Good morning, mortgage coaches. Thanks for joining us for another Thursday Q&A training session. Uh, for today's discussion, we're going to be uh, putting a heavy focus on TRID and what it means to you as a mortgage coach member and how you can use it as a positive advantage. Um, so I guess what, once we finish going over just kind of the high-level discussion on what TRID is, you know, what it means to you as a mortgage coach, I'm actually going to show you an example that uh, Sean Herrero from RPM came up with uh, to just kind of destigmatize the TRID and explain it at the same time. So it's going to be a very simple presentation that you can put together and feel free to do it alongside me when I'm doing it today. Uh, but you can repurpose this for all your realtor partners, your borrowers, so you can stay ahead of the game and make sure everybody's educated about what tip and five-year cost really mean to the borrower now. So with that said, uh, just kind of a quick overview. You know, we had Mitch Kiter on the call um, not, not too long ago, about a month, month and a half ago. And we asked him about TRID, and we asked him what, what his thoughts were on it, and what, what, is, what is the real advantage to TRID. And he said, well, it's all about communicating, educating, and managing the borrower and realtor experience. So, you know, in a nutshell, you know, the, the way you can really take advantage of this is, you know, be positive, make it simple, make it visual, and then share it on mobile. So Dave preaches this all the time, you know, sharing is really key. It's the easiest way to get your presentations out there. And all of, you know, in, in both the Rate Watch app and the Mortgage Coach app, there's share features all over the place. So you can always tap the share report buttons. You can tap the little three connected dots if you're on Android and you can share that immediately. It allows you to share via text, via, via email. You know, you can actually copy it to a clipboard if you need to. But um, the, the key to this is just make sure to get it out there. So another, another quick quote for you from Dave Ramsey. You know, he says, uh, always start a relationship going into the goals. Do a total cost analysis that shows them how they're hitting their goals. And we've been doing this since 97, where we've been producing a total cost analysis. And it goes above and beyond what a standard fee worksheet or, or even like Excel sheets and rate quotes that you may have published otherwise. You know, we, we've actually distilled it into a presentation where you can show everything from the basics of the loan. So, you know, you want to show rate, you want to show payment, APR, closing costs, and that sort of stuff. But we take it, and have been for a long time, we take it a step further. We show them, you know, an expanded view of what that loan is going to look like. We're, we're going to show them what, what the cost looks like in five years. We're going to we're going to show them what it looks like for the long term. We're going to compare things like the interest and MI that they're paying. We're going to compare the, the net savings, the net costs of doing the loan. Um, so you are, you are already used to doing that. So in order to get into this new conversation with TIP and five-year costs, really you don't have to change very much. You just have to know what they mean, and you have to be able to explain them ahead of time with your borrowers and realtor partners. Now, the easiest way to do this, is, as you're seeing here, this is the total cost analysis. You know, we've made some updates to it, and I'm going to show you those in just a moment here. But um, you want to be using this for all your experiences, whether it's with your borrowers, whether it's with your realtor partners. Or, you know, you're trying to help a family get into a home. You're actually on-site delivering some advice. But it allows you to show comparisons. You know, you can really drill down on what the monthly payment really means. You can show the total costs over time, which we'll discuss in more detail here. And then, of course, don't forget to put video on everything. Uh, having video on your presentations is really a key factor because if you don't put video, that presentation is subject to whoever's explanation that's, that's part of this conversation, whether it be, you know, the borrower's talking to their spouse, to, you know, someone that they trust that has a little bit of mortgage knowledge, the, the easiest way to make sure that everybody understands what you're getting across is put a video on it. And remember, you can update that video in t all, all the way through the loan process, whether you're doing it from your, your webcam on your machine or whether you're doing it from your mobile device. So if you haven't seen how to do that on your mobile device where you can record video and do Edge Live, um, I would highly encourage you go to our knowledge base and go to the, the Coaching Call Archive. We've done a lot of videos on it recently that shows you exactly how to do that. In fact, you can also visit our YouTube page um, if you want a little bit more detail on this. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the legal ramifications of trade. I'm just going to really show you how, it, uh, how Mortgage Coach is associated with it. But if you want to go to our YouTube channel, it's just youtube.com forward slash mortgage coach. And you can pull up you know, some more detailed calls like the, the interview we did with Richard Horn. Um, and then, of course, there's going to be one in there called Mobile Conversations. Take a look at that one because that's really going to help you to understand how to use your mobile device, not, not only to talk to people, but as a, as a competitive advantage when you're in the field. You know, you're, all, you're not going to be around your webcam all the time, but you're around your phone all the time. And if something happens and it's kind of last minute and you need to make an update to your presentations, you can pop a new video on that from the side of the road. So take a look at that. Make sure you're familiar with, with what that is.
All right, so let's get into uh, let's get into the actual loan estimate here. So you can see I'm showing you the page one of the loan estimate, and you know we we asked Richard about this because he actually helped design this when he was with the CFPB. And while he has you know glowing things to say about most of it, there's parts of it that he he was like, well, you know, we kind of had to do that because it was part of the statute. So you know, even the people that designed this said, yes, it's easier for the borrowers to understand. You know, we had a, a good response from our our test group where we pushed this out. You know, and while maybe they couldn't define what TIP was or what APR was, it was an easy visual way for them to see exactly what the loan is. And if they're going to compare multiple estimates against each other, they can compare these new figures to really get an idea of which loan is going to work best for them. So that brings up another point. You know, CFPB is telling people to shop. Now, naturally, if you've got good relationships with your borrowers, there's going to be a lot of them that will never shop you out because you've already delivered this quality presentation to them. You've already been their mortgage advisor. You know, they've had a good experience with you. But they're going to get loan estimates that say things you can shop for, and it's, it might trigger some ideas. So in order to get ahead of the game, make sure somebody else isn't explaining things like tip and cost over five years to them. So that leads us into the conversation for today. And, and why it's so important for you to get ahead of it. You need to know what the loan estimate is saying and just understand that there's going to be some new features on it. It used to be just rate, cost, payment, and APR. Now it's got cost over five years and tip. So this is actually what it looks like on the loan estimate. You can see it shows the five-year cost, five-year principal, annual percentage rate, and then total interest percentage. And just to give you a basic definition on what total interest percentage is, this is the interest they would pay over the life of the loan divided by the principal balance. So it's going to be a really high number, and it's going to be scary for a lot of people. But again, I'm going to show you a strategy a little bit later in this call where you can just you can show exactly what TIP has been over the years. I mean, it's always been there. It's just never been a calculated field that we've shown to borrowers. Now, we also did an interview with Jeremy Forcier, and there's some really good nuggets here. Um, and and I'm, I'm recording this call, so if you'd like to revisit this after we're done, this will be in our coaching call archive. Feel free to grab screenshots of this, make it your own, and um, you know, use it as part of your conversations with your borrowers. I'm not going to read this all to you, but uh, I'll, I'll certainly make this available for you. Now finally, you know, as I said before, the reason video is so important is because there's so many people in the loan decision process, and you can see we've got them all listed up here. You know, there's a body of work, there's an advisor, whatever, but your video defines what your presentation covers. So as you're thinking about what TRID does, what, what TIP and five-year costs are in terms of explaining to your borrower, this really needs to be the, the first part, the first thing you're talking about, you know, in that whether it's a pre-application, whether you've already taken the application, doesn't matter. They need to understand what this is because, like I said, you don't want them to get this explanation from somebody else because it may have a negative connotation. And that's not the way we're going to approach it. We're going to approach it as a very positive thing. Now, I have made some scripts available for you in the handout section, so let me get over to that real quick. There we go. So we've got a couple of review checklists, a video checklist in there. We've got a TRID scripting checklist, and uh, let me show you where that's at. Let's see here. There we go. So there's my GoToMeeting window. You can see that uh, in the GoToMeeting window, there's an area called Handouts, and there's three different ones in there. And when you click on them, it'll actually download these to your desktop. Feel free to save those, uh, print them out, you know, put them up somewhere. Uh, but I'll show you what they look like real quick here. This is the uh, Mortgage Coach Talking Points, and this is the the TRID handout. Um, it's got a, it's got a video checklist on it. It's got some more detail on how you can talk with your realtor partners about it, some verbiage you can use to, uh, to further cement your relationships or even to gain new relationships with your realtor partner. So click on those handouts, save them to your desktop, and definitely make use of those. All right, so let's get into the meat of the conversation today. You know, what, what are the new features on the total cost analysis? How can you use those? And how can you explain those in a positive manner to your borrowers and realtor partners? So let's take a look. Now, I've actually got uh, an analysis up here today, and what I did is I modeled this after Sean Herrero's presentation, where he showed what, what did your loan look like in 1995? You know, what were the rates back then? What did your loan look like in 2005? And then what does it look like today? Now, they're all the same loan. They've got different varying rates, so that's obviously the difference. You know, the average rate at, at these different times. Obviously, we're at the lowest point right now than we've ever been. So this presentation, what it's geared to show is, look, TIP's been around forever. We've just never shown it to you. And back in 95, the TIP on this same loan, because of the uh, interest rate back then, it's pretty high, 215%. Back in 2005, 
Back in 2005, rates were significantly better, but look at your tip, still pretty high, it's over 100%. Then look at today. With rates the way they are today, our tip is actually under 100% now. So this is a very positive thing that you can tell the borrower in terms of what does this really mean? Well, this is the total interest you're going to pay over the life of the loan divided by your principal balance. So this is the cost of getting a loan. How much, how much money does your, co your, your uh, loan cost you? And loans today are cheaper than they've ever been. And this is perfect evidence of it. So this is the presentation I'm going to show you how to prepare uh, when we get a little bit further into today's call. But I do want to make you aware of what's new on this presentation. Obviously, there's the tip, which I just showed you. There is the five-year cost, and you can see that that's already calculated for you. Now, this five-year cost is independent of whatever you do in the midterm section here. So if I want to show 84 months, that's not going to change what my five-year cost looks like. So that'll be a static number that's just always there for you. Now, if you have multiple liens on this presentation, you're going to find that you'll see first and second lien tip. You'll see first and second lien five-year cost. So this will expand down a little bit more. Now, additionally, we've given you a lot more room for payment notes. So if you want to put additional verbiage in here, you can see this gets pretty big. Um, you can imagine most people that are viewing this, say, on a laptop, they're going to see it looking something like this. Most people have very widescreen, um, you know, vertically challenged laptops, right? So keep, keep in mind, you've got about a paragraph of room here before it runs out of view for a lot of people. Now, the other thing I want to show you, and this is automatic, it's already in there, is there's going to be some verbiage at the top of all your presentations, whether it's a total cost analysis, a rent versus own, an open house presentation, or a seller buy-down presentation. And it's going to say your actual rate, payment, and costs could be higher. Get an official loan estimate before choosing a loan. Now, this is a compliance initiative. So we plugged it in there for you. Anytime you're putting out a presentation that is not the loan estimate, you've got to have this verbiage on it. So we've put it in there for you. It's at the top. It's also in the disclosure. So when the borrower first clicks on your link, whether it's from the mobile device or from the browser like I'm doing here, they're going to see that verbiage right at the top of the disclosure here. And then it's going to have your, your regular ones and so it'll have your extended disclosures. It'll all be there. But at the very top, this verbiage will be there. Now, a question comes in quite often, and that is, you know, from my understanding of what the CFPB is asking for, I only have to put this verbiage up if they have not yet received a loan estimate. Now that is true, but remember we're comparing multiple loan scenarios here. So unless you've given them a loan estimate for every scenario you're showing, you'd still need to have this verbiage. So what we did is we just made it static. It's going to stay there for you. If your borrowers ask you about it, just let them know, hey, this, this is a dynamic presentation. We can change this at any time. So maybe you, you are considering a different type of down payment. You know, maybe we looked at the loan originally and it met your finances, but something recently happened and it's, we, we have to go with something a little different now. As I change loans, or as I change loan information, rates, terms, I don't need to redisclose. You know, I haven't given them a loan estimate. And even if I have given them a loan estimate, this is not it. So when I'm, when I'm presenting this to my borrowers, I'm presenting it as, look, we can keep this nice and fluid without you having to see a bunch of docs every time something changes. And when, you, when we do get to a loan estimate, when we've decided on that loan estimate for you, you're going to get that form. And it's the one I showed you a moment ago, three-page form that, that shows them the tip. It shows them the five-year cost. It shows them the rundown of all their closing costs. And that is really going to be your, your point of record for that loan. And remember, if something changes after that point, you got to redo it. So just keep that in mind. Um, your, your Mortgage Coach Edge presentation is the one that's not going to trigger anything. Now, I will let you know, to trigger a loan estimate, you've got those six pieces of information that you'd have to collect to do that. So one of the things I like to do to keep myself out of that loop is, you know, if, if, even if I've run credit before, if I don't have a property address or if I leave it as TBD, that, that really, it, um, it ties off that loop. So I'm missing one of the things that would be that would be required for the application. So just kind of a workaround for you. Um, if you don't, if you don't, uh, you don't put in that property address, you're going to keep yourself away from that. Did you collect the necessary pieces for an application? Do we need to trigger an application? No. Does your TCA trigger an application? Definitely not. So just keep that in mind. No matter what step in the loan process you're at, you know, as long as you, as long as you're not putting those those factors in there, you should be okay. Now, oftentimes, you're using this pre-application anyway, so you may not even have a credit score. You may not have a social yet. So there's other parts of it that are, that are going to save you. But if you've got all those and you still don't have a property address, that's your key point. All right, so I've shown you 
you know, what the total cost analysis looks like, you may have noticed here that our, uh, we used to have a, a four quadrant display. It's a little bit different now. We've now stacked them on the right side so we can make more room for the, the tip and five year cost over here. But all the, all the information is still the same. When you hit the more info up in the monthly payment section, it's still going to pop out, you know, the, the, the general factors that are part of your presentation here. Uh, when you click on more info in the 60 month section, it's still going to show you how this, how our total cost, and this is this is a little different from what the CFPB calculates, because CFPB includes principal, we don't. So we we just take the interest in my paid, we add the closing costs in, and that gives us a total cost for your short term. And again, you can adjust these to whatever amount of months you want, but we compare those total costs against each other. That's where we're getting this net savings here. Now the difference, as I said, between what uh, what the five year cost on the left here shows versus what the right's going to show is that the CFPB is looking at the entire thing. They're looking at principal, interest, mortgage insurance, closing costs as being the determining factors. Ours, we don't view principal as a cost. They're retaining that in the form of equity. So you're going to see that your, your net cost over 60 months uh, from our calculation is going to be lower than the five-year cost of the CFPB calculation by the amount of the principal. Now, long term is still the same as well. We can still show interest in MI over time. We can show equity position. We can show them where the loan balance is at uh, whatever period you want. Remember, you can adjust these years, so they're not uh, they're not static. Now, one th one other thing to remember, you know, this, this while this is a uh, a webinar geared towards TRID, ask questions. This is still a Q and A session, so this is for you. Um, we're going to be probably done with the TRID part of this about halfway through the call. So if you have other types of uh, presentations that you'd like to see, maybe you have uh, a, a question on, on how to do certain things in Edge, pop those into the questions area in your GoToMeeting toolbar. I'll make sure and get those addressed for you. Uh, but for now, I think what we're going to do is, uh, I do want to show you what this looks like on mobile real quick. So this is that same presentation we were just looking at on the mobile device. You can see that uh, we have our summary section, and it does have first lien total interest, first lien five-year costs. So same fields as were on the browser version, they are here on the total cost in the mobile. So nothing else has changed in the mobile with the exception of the disclosure. We put that uh, that verbiage up in the, in the disclosure as well. So the first time your borrower clicks on it, whether it's from a mobile device or from the browser, they're going to see this, this detail here. All right, so with that said, let me show you how to build this report. Now the cool part about this one is you're just using the same loan three times, so you can build this very, very quickly. So the way to do it is, what I did with this is I made it a marketing presentation. Now the reason I made it a marketing presentation is because when you do that, it strips off any borrower information that might be in the contact area. Again, remember, if, we're, uh, if we don't have a property yet, we have a TBD, you know, when, when we do marketing, it actually strips off property information. So that actually just covers us right there. Now I've, uh, I've named it Understanding the Tip, and I gave it a friendly name because I'm only using this for today's demo, so I want to make sure and differentiate this from other presentations that I'm doing. But I went ahead in the goals and I selected Purchase a New Home. Now if you guys are following along and you're trying to emulate this presentation, feel free to do so. Um, if I go a little bit too fast, just ping me over in the questions area and let me know, hey, a little too fast, can you repeat that? I'd be happy to. So first step, remember, make it a marketing presentation, give it a nice title. Give it a friendly name if you want to. Don't have to for this one because really the report headline says it all. You're going to select purchase a new home because you're going to show purchase options here. And when you get to the assumptions area, you want to choose kind of a, a median price range for your area. Um, you know, obviously on Sean Herrera's report, he was using properties in the millions. Um, on my report, I'm using the 400,000 point, but you know, you may be in an area where you know, 150,000 is the right way to go. Completely up to you. Just keep it uniform across the board when you get into your products. Now you can bypass a lot of the affordability questions here because you're not speaking directly with a client about their affordability on this one. This is just a general presentation that you can reappropriate for your realtor partners and any borrower. So now we get into our loan products. And the way this is structured is we've got what this loan looked like in 1995. And I just basically named it that. Um, in this case, I actually reduced my price to show 250000 here, so we can uh, see what that looks like. Um, you can see I have a down payment of 50000 I just used 20% so that I'm not uh, messing with MI. And then I showed the interest rate back in 95. I put it on a 30-year term. And then what I did is I applied a closing cost template in here. 
and hopefully you've got your templates designed. If you don't have your templates designed, you definitely want to get those in place. Um, it makes your life a lot easier, saves you a bunch of time on this, so that you don't have to do the guesswork, you don't have to ballpark your fees. Uh, you actually have detail that you can show to your clients when you're when you're preparing this presentation. Now I put in my uh, 15 days of prepaid interest as well, and then on the third page of this, I made sure to indicate my hazard insurance and property taxes. Um, if you choose to do one with it is a, is a lower down payment, say for instance you're going to show 10% uh, down, make sure and include the MI there so that the payment comes out correctly. If you're going to do FHA loans, uh, you can certainly do that too. I mean, you can do FHA back in 95, 25, and then today. Um, they obviously have different mortgage insurance factors depending on when they took those out. So you'd want to do a little research on that and just make sure you're using the right factors. For simplicity's sake, I like using a 20% down loan so that I don't have to mess with MI and just keep it conventional. Now, I did also indicate um, some prepaid reserves, so hazard insurance reserves and tax reserves. Um, once you put those numbers right here, these are multipliers, and they'll just multiply against what you have in these boxes, and they'll pipe that fee back over to your fee detail, so you don't have to double enter that. Now, the next step here was I added another loan. And what I did here, the easy way for you to do this, is I named it Your Loan in 25, then I used the Copy button, and I copied that 95 loan that I did. Then all I did was modify the interest rate. I don't need to do anything with my closing costs. They're all the same here. So because I used the copy button, everything came over for me. Even my reserves came over. So now I'm going to do a third product. Now the third product is what does your loan look like today? And what I did was I named it your loan today. I used the copy button. And I copied that 95 loan again. And then I altered the rate to four and an eighth. Again, no need to edit, edit anything in the closing costs or in the monthly costs, so we're good there. And that produced this presentation right here. Now, there's a fourth factor that you might want to consider, and it depends on your school of thought. You know, there's uh, opposing schools based on things like the Dave Ramsey approach, where he says you should pay off your loan as fast as possible. You know, earmark extra money per month to pay it off. Or maybe you're on the Rick Edelman crew, and you're you're more about making the mortgage make money for you, so you're you're reinvesting into external assets. Um, both are completely acceptable. You know, it's up to you in terms of how you want to do it. When you're having the tip conversation, though, you know, an external investment vehicle doesn't affect the mortgage itself. So if you're having the tip conversation and you want to show what reinvestment does to tip, what I did is I actually created a fourth product here, and I called it the Dave Ramsey strategy. And I had a typo. There we go. But I called it the Dave Ramsey strategy. And what I did is I copied that exact same loan, that, that your loan today. So I used the copy button, copied your loan today, and then all I did was go to the analysis screen. This is where you can do all your reinvestment grids. Hit the adjust reinvestment strategy, and then I earmarked some money going back in. This is subjective in terms of how much you want to use. Maybe you can do a hundred dollars a month. Either way, you're showing them how to pay down their note a little bit faster so they can be debt free faster. And this ties back to a lot of those questions and scripting that we covered in the very beginning, which is you know, things like when, when uh, both, actually Todd Duncan says this a lot, you know, how old do you want to be when, you're, when your house is paid off? I mean, that's a, that's a great question to ask somebody. And, you know, it really makes them think about this loan I'm getting into, it's, it's a long-term, it's a long-term machine that I can use to do what I need to do with it. But, you know, the conversation you're having is all about tip and money is cheaper than it used to be. So that 30-year that expectancy on a mortgage, obviously most people don't stay in their mortgage for 30 years. They're going to they're gonna refinance it several times, most likely. But we have such low rates today that there's a very good chance that a refi is not the best opportunity for somebody in the near future. You know, rates are going to be a little bit higher. So giving them an opportunity to say, what does it look like if I take some extra money and put it in the mortgage, you can show them a faster payoff date. And in fact, you can show them a lower tip. So I went ahead and created that product, and I didn't show it to you originally. I had that unmarked because I wanted you to see what the original presentation looks like without the Dave Ramsey strategy. But as soon as I come in here and tap that key, we're going to see our, our TCA update to have a fourth product in here. And maybe I should just, there it goes, okay. 
So there's our Dave Ramsey strategy. You can see it's the exact same loan in terms of payment as that Your Loan Today product. Closing costs are exactly the same. But just having that extra $200 principal reduction payment per month, look what I did to the tip. I've now decreased the amount of interest I need to pay over the life of the loan by 20, 23%. That is huge. 23% of the interest that you're paying is a phenomenal number. And you can show them this if you want to. You can go out and push this out to the 30-year point. So if I go back into Edge, go to my analysis screen, and move out my long term to 30 years, and I'll go ahead and trigger a save by hitting one of those right or left arrows, we're going to see this adjust out to 30 years, and there it goes. So the, you know, the difference between just your loan today and the Dave Ramsey strategy, 20%, 23% interest. Now, even at a $200,000 loan amount, or a $200, loan amount here, that still equates to $47,000 in, in interest that they'd save over the life of this loan just by doing that extra principal reduction payment. So very powerful strategy that, you know, feel free to add this column if you'd like to. Uh, I wanted to show it to you because it does affect TIP and you should be aware that principal reduction payments in EDGE will affect your TIP. Um, they will also affect your five-year cost. Now this might throw you for a little bit of a loop when you look at it. You know, your loan today would cost you 628 over the five-year period of time. With the Dave Ramsey strategy, it's going to cost you more over the same period of time. Now, the reason for that, you're putting $200 a month more into principal. And the five-year cost from the CFPB says we count principal as a cost. So that's why your cost is going to be higher with a principal reduction versus without. But the amount of interest that you save, pretty phenomenal. That's, that's staggering. I mean, when you look at, this is just five-year cost, and it, it's costing you $12,000 more. But we're saving them $47,000 in interest over the life of the loan. Plus, you know, this is all principal, the difference here. So they're retaining that in the form of equity. So to me, this is a moot point. I'm not even, I, I mean, I'll discuss it with the borrower, but the real factor here is how much interest are you going to pay over the life of this loan? And I've now reduced that total interest percentage by 23%, just by earmarking an extra payment every month. So completely up to you. You know, you guys don't have to show this, this column. Um, I would highly encourage you, though, to at least show these first three. It's a great strategy that you can get out to all your realtor partners and all your borrowers to just let them know, hey, tip's always been there. We've just never shown it. And in fact, money has gotten cheaper over time, and today's market is the best market in history to get the lowest interest percentage that you could have gotten. So pretty, pretty powerful uh, educational piece. Now remember, include a video on it. You don't want to just send this out with three columns on it and no video, no understanding. Um, part of your job as an originator, obviously, is to educate. So you know, if you, if you send this out there without a video, you're really leaving it subject to interpretation. So make sure to put a video on it. Try, try to keep it under about two minutes. It doesn't have to be very long. Um, matter of fact, over two minutes, you start losing people's attention. So keep it under two. Just give them a, a brief explanation of, uh, of what you're showing here. You know, how, you, how you're talking about the tip, how you're explaining that, how you're talking about five-year cost, and, and what it really should mean to the borrower when they're comparing different loan programs against each other. But again, you know, once they get that loan estimate, it's going to tell them these are their services you could shop for, and that's going to trigger an idea. So while most of your clients may not shop you, there's going to be people who wouldn't otherwise do it that might do it because of this. So make sure that you've got a nice, transparent presentation out there so they can understand this. And then when they come back and ask about this, it's like, oh, yeah, we discussed this in the beginning, remember? We talked about the total interest you're going to pay over time. We talked about the total principal you're going to pay over time. We had the conversation on what are the net savings differences between each program. And we made our decision on the one that is the least costly for you. And TIP actually shows that. If we were to compare the TIP on the program that you chose versus another similar program that you know we discarded because it wasn't right for you, you're going to see that we chose the one that was best for you. All right. Uh, Charlie's question. He says, can this be added as one of our defaults? Unfortunately, Charlie, it can't. I can't add defaults to your presentation because they're all dynamically created under your account. The, the defaults that you get when you open your edge for the first time, we can funnel those in because you haven't done any work yet. You haven't, there's no database there yet. But unfortunately, I can't put them in after the fact. So it, it'll take you five minutes, though, Charlie. I, I really highly, highly encourage you to create one of these in your account, take you a couple of minutes. And the easy way to get this out to multiple people is once you've got it created, Go into your analysis screen, copy the entire analysis, copy it to a new client, and hit OK. And now this one is understanding the tip. So I'll type that one in. And then in the friendly name, I'm going to indicate who I sent it to. This is for Joe Barwer. 
And this will have a different link than your original because we used the copy. So when you go to the end of the presentation, all you do, hit generate link. This is now ready to go out to Joe Barwer. Of course, add a video on it. Now, if you're doing this from your mobile, there's one really cool factor. You don't have to re-record your video over and over and over again. There's a function inside the mobile that allows you to upload from your camera album, so your video album stored on your device. Let me see if I can show you that real quick here. Now this is great because you only have to record this video once and you can upload it on multiple presentations. So let's get into our Mortgage Coach app. There we go. Now when you first get into the Mortgage Coach app, when you want to log into it, because th this is the view your clients are going to get, but you have a special area that you can log in. That's this little silhouette guy up at the top left. When you do that, it's going to ask you for your credentials. So these are your, your, uh, your Edge logins right here. So your email address and then whatever password you've set up in Edge. Obviously, it's the same for RateWatch as well. So if you're using that app, make sure to use that same uh, login there. But you're just going to hit Sign In. Now, once you do, there's another silhouette guy up here at the top right. When you click on that guy, there's now a little area here where you can toggle it whether you want just the camera or you want camera and album prompt. So when you toggle that and you get green here, that's going to enable you. When you when you click on the video component, it's going to ask you, do you want to record a new one or do you want to upload one? Now you can create one for one client, store it on your phone, on your iPad, wherever you're doing it, and then you can actually just upload that. Every time you make a copy of your tip presentation, as soon as you've generated a link, it's now going to be available for you to record a video on in your Mortgage Coach app. So let's go, once you've set that setting, you're in here, you're going to go to whatever client you were working on, and there's my understanding the tip. I'm going to click on that one, or tap on it I should say. I'm going to choose the total cost analysis. I'm going to choose video, and it's going to ask me, do you want to take the video from your camera, from your album, or do you want to cancel out? And if you're doing it for the first time, you, you obviously want to do it from your camera. You don't have a video to upload yet. But um, you might actually want to record this video outside of the app first so it gets stored in your album. So what I would do is I would literally go back to my home screen here. Let me cancel out. And I would just open up my camera. You know, let's see if I've got my camera app. And there we go. Now, I would open up my camera, point it at the right spot. I mean, if it's an iPad, you can kind of prop it on the table so it's nice and straight. And then just you're actually going to want to toggle it for video, so you would slide this down. And everybody's camera recorders are going to look a little bit different. I've got a specific camera app that I use for this, but the, the main camera that's built into iOS and Android devices works perfectly fine. Um, but once you, once you push this over to video, start recording, and then once it's recorded, it's in your album from there on out. So now the next time I go into my mobile app and I want to put a video on a presentation, I can call up that video that I already recorded. I don't have to recreate the wheel every single time. All right, let's see. Uh, there's a couple more questions in the box. Let me see if I can get those addressed. Ah, Charlie, thank you. I appreciate the response there. Ah, Taffy's asking, can I put the link in chat? Certainly. So this is the link that I'm using right here. And I'm dropping that into your chat right now. And feel free to, feel free to, you know, Click on this and pop it up in the browser. You know, you can copy this pretty easily by just running through what I did. And, you know, you can make it your own, too. You don't have to use exact round figures like I did. I mean, you saw I used 10% for the 95 loan. <coughs> Excuse me. It's actually somewhere around, like, 9.97 is the median for, for uh, 95. Completely up to you. There is, there is something to be said about accuracy for that. So if you want to use a more accurate rate on that one, you know, go, go to somewhere like MortgageX and look for the average rates over time. Uh, it really does show you, it shows you a monthly average of, of what the Fannie Mae rates were, what the Freddie Mac were over time, and you can, you can get a, a really solid, fine-tuned calculation for what you feel should be presented as those different rates. But certainly, feel free to copy this, you know, feel free to do what you need to with it. Again, you, you can include the Dave Ramsey approach, you can exclude that. Uh, really, it's more a function of what's your philosophy, how do you talk to your borrowers, and, and you know, what are, what are the general goals you're discussing? Okay, uh, Taffy's asking, um, can we see the best practices for recording video on a phone but sending report from the laptop so Outlook can be used? Ah, great question, Taffy. 
So if you've already recorded the video on your mobile device, you know, you've gone here, you, uh, you hit the video key, and let me see if I can do this for you real quick. I think I probably have my camera blocked by my iPad case, but we'll see. So I'll hit video here, take it from the camera. Oh, there we go. So obviously you want to look around a little bit, find out where the eye of your camera is, and make sure you maintain eye contact with it. But um, you know, if you're using an iPad, it's pretty easy to just hold it out. If you're using a phone, you know, put it at the angle you want. I mean, I wouldn't go real drastic with a high angle like this. I mean, I think that's probably a little bit too much. But uh, you know, start recording your video. So you know, hit record, and then just start talking, explaining what your loan options are, what you're trying to get across. Uh, educate them on tip and five-year costs. Let them know that you know you do this for all your clients to make sure that they understand you know exactly what the implications are of the most important decisions they're going to make financially in their life. Um, and then when you're done, simply tap that again. Then it's going to ask you, do you want to use this video? Do you want to retake it? Or do you want to play it back? Now, once you hit use video, it's actually going to, uh, and you'll see this is going to change here. It says, you can wait until upload finishes or work on up upload or work on other tasks. Now, once it's uploaded, it does tell you, please wait for a few minutes for the conversion to complete before streaming to other devices. Now remember, this can be viewed in the browser or on Android or on iOS. Now they support different types of video. So we need this time so that we can convert your video into the three formats that those can support. So give it about five minutes before you before you work on uh, actually sending the email. But you know as Taffy indicated, once you once you've put it in the uh, in the mobile, you can actually check back inside your presentation. Simply go to the preview of that one. And you can see if your video is there yet. And it won't be just yet because it hasn't converted. But it shouldn't take too long. It'll take maybe five minutes or less. But when you do a preview of your presentation or you click on your link from the browser here, if you don't see the video window pop up, it's not yet converted. Once it is, however, all you have to do is hit that share key and you can grab your link. Now you can paste this into an email outbound to your client through Outlook. So if you've got uh, if you've got stock email templates that you use, which I, I do highly encourage that, um, I see a lot of people using either email templates in Outlook, or kind of a cool advice is you can actually save it as a signature. So you know you have one signature called you know client client response letter or something like that. And it's a nice, well-typed out, you know, thank you for your time. You know, as we discussed, I, I prepared a TCA for you to show you your mortgage options. You're going to have questions when you're done viewing this presentation, so make sure to give me a call and we can discuss it further. And then you're just going to plug in your link every time. So now all you got to do is click your signature, click the client email, plug in your link, and send. So very, very easy to, to, to create a habit out of that in Outlook and very simple. Uh, but as Taffy noted, you know, once you're... When you're going from mobile to browser because you want to be able to use the Outlook uh, functionality, just make sure and give it about you know five minutes or so to, to allow the video to convert into the format that can be viewable here in both versions. Ah, Juan Carlos asking, how would an on ARM product in your presentation affect the tip using Mortgage Coach? So great question, Juan. Uh, appreciate it. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to do. Let me get rid of one of these products here. As a matter of fact, I'll get rid of the, the Ramsey strategy. I'm actually going to overwrite it. So instead of making this a fixed loan, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get the, the rate I can get for an arm right now for the intro period. I'll specify it is an arm. Put in our caps and adjustments. And you know these you can pull directly from your rate sheet. But um, generally, you're only going to have a couple of different arm programs that you offer. They might be different variations, like you'll have a 3-1, you know, a 5-1, one, a 7-1, one, one, uh, and a 10-1 usually. Um, but you know the caps are going to be because you're going with the same investors. The caps are going to be just pretty similar between them. Uh, but you can look at your rate sheet to find those out. But let's say that this one is a 226 loan. You know the most common ones are 226 and 525. So uh, a 226 loan just means that the first adjustment cap is that first two. The periodic cap is that second two. And then that six on the end in a 226 is actually your life cap. Now, we don't necessarily ask for the life cap. We ask for the max rate. So you would take that life cap of six and add it to your start rate to find out what the max rate is. And my start rate is three and a quarter. So I'm going to put 9.25. Now, let me go back a step. I do want to name this real quick because this is no longer the Ramsey strategy. This is going to be 5-1-arm. And um, 
the other best case here. Now, when we come in here, we know that this is a 5-1. So our first adjustment month is going to be the month after the five-year fixed period. So that's going to be month 61. Now, when you call it a 5-1, 5 1, 5 slash 1, that 1 indicates how often it's going to adjust. So in this case, the 5-1, it's going to adjust every year. So I'm going to put in 12 months. Now, margin, you're going to get this from your rate sheet. Usually, it's going to be right around 2 and a quarter. And then you can select the index that it's based on. So let's say it's based on the... Uh, one year LIBOR. Now the floor just means how, how low can this go? If this was to adjust downward, what's the bottom level that the rate can get to? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it can't go lower than three. Now the scenario is pretty important here. I'm choosing a best case scenario here. This is not realistic by the way. Anytime you're showing an ARM scenario and you're showing best case, that's going to make it so that the APR matches your disclosures because your disclosures are basing APR on just index plus margin after the first adjustment point, which is it's not realistic at all. And oftentimes you can get an APR below the note rate, which is horribly confusing for your client. Now with that being said, you can also choose worst case. Now worst case is not realistic either. Worst case is going to say that at my first adjustment point, it's going to adjust up to the max, and it's going to keep adjusting at the max adjustments until it hits my total max rate. Now that, that would indicate in this case, it's only going to have a couple of adjustments before it hits max rate. So my APR is going to be really high on this one. Now before we move on to the custom, I do want to show you what this looks like on the presentation. So if I'm showing best case scenario, and then I go back to my analysis, and let's just generate that preview again. Oh, there we go. My video is in play. So now, Taffy, this is what you were talking about. Since my video is ready here, I can now go ahead and send this out to my borrowers and realtor partners. Um, so good deal. So let's close that out. Now you can see the 5-1 best case. Now you can see the APR here, 3.27, obviously not realistic at all, but it is what your disclosures are going to show. Uh, the payment, that's good. Oh, I need to make sure and pull out my uh, principal reduction payment here. One second here. All right, so as soon as that 200 disappears, we're going to see that things change just a little bit. There we go. Now you can see what my total interest percentage is based on a best case, 54.37. And if we look at our payment stream, we can see exactly what this is doing. It's staying fixed for 60 months, then it's dropping down to index plus margin. That's at 3.086, and it's staying there for almost 300 payments. Then we've got a, a true and final payment at that rate as well. Now. Obviously, this is completely unrealistic. We don't expect an arm to just sit on the very bottom level for the entire life of the loan. But unfortunately, that's what the APR is going to be based on in your disclosures. So it's, it's a good chance to show your borrower what this looks like. But if you're going to do this, I would also recommend adding a product that shows either what the worst case is or what a custom case would look like, what, what you predicted might look like. So let me go back and change this over to worst case so you can see what the difference here. We're going to see a difference in the APR, we're going to see a difference in the tip, and the five-year cost. All right, so I've changed it over to worst. And there it goes. So you see what happened. It went from 56% tip to 148%. And check out our APR. Skyrocketed up to 6.6. .6. If we look at our payment stream now, you can see that uh, our payment stream, we're going up, 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 up until we hit that cap, that max cap. And that's a, that's a lot of very high payments. So that's what's triggering that really high APR. Um, actually, our five-year cost didn't change because that's within the fixed period. So best, worst, or custom wouldn't matter. It hasn't adjusted yet. But uh, our tip definitely changed. It went up pretty dramatically. Now, if you want to, you can schedule your own custom adjustment schedule. So instead of choosing best or worst, you can choose custom. And you can tell it exactly how much you want it to adjust. My first adjustment point, I only wanted to adjust up a quarter percent. And maybe I want it to go up the next year by, I don't know, three quarters. And the next year, maybe another half. And I can continue adding line items. Maybe I want to push the next one out to month 120, and I want it to go down. 
half a point. You can schedule whatever you'd like here. Um, you know, obviously, use some common sense when you're doing this. You don't want to put something that's completely unrealistic. But generally, if you were to look at what mortgage rates have done over time, and specifically the index values, I go to mortgagex.com for this. But if I wanted to see what the LIBOR has done over time, you can see that you know we've had kind of a roller coaster ride until we hit the crash. May or actually November of 07, that's where we started dropping off the cliff. And you see we got a little gain back, but we went down. Everything after 09 has been almost flatlined, so we haven't seen a whole lot of movement out of these, uh, out of the LIBOR at least on this one. We could certainly compare the the other ones, but all of them fo basically follow the same pattern here, where we're not seeing much adjustment at all. And if you look at just the last five years, I mean, it's it's pretty much flatlined. There's one little bump up, and then it goes back down. So kind of keep this in mind as you're scheduling custom adjustments and and certainly I would highly encourage that anytime you're showing a custom adjustment schedule show them a graphic like this show them what it's done since the crash here and, and what you expect it to do going forward because that's how you justify what you expect your, your adjustments to be uh, so another question from Juan Carlo um, CFPB's position is to assume that the rate will remain the same that is correct so when when we get to uh, what the five-year cost looks like. Obviously, we're within the five-year period, so it's not going to change um, when we're looking at uh, the five-year cost right here. But if we were doing a 3-1 or something like that, the five-year cost is going to be based on keeping that note rate through the five years. They're not assuming any, any upward movement or downward movement when they're generating this five-year cost. Now, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, considering for the APR, they keep it down below, you know, they keep it at index plus margin instead of assuming no rate adjustments and basically showing it as a, a fixed lien. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me as to why they did that, but just keep in mind they are doing that. When they're when we're looking at uh, TIP and when we're looking at five-year cost on an arm, you know, CFPB's position is we don't know what it's going to do, so we're just going to keep it at the note rate and assume it's just like a fixed loan. So it's just a good conversation piece for your borrowers. We don't do that. We, we are going to adjust the APR based on your scenario. We are going to adjust the TIP and the five-year cost if your fixed period is less than five years. So great question, Juan. Thank you. All right, we've got about 13 minutes left here, and I think we've, uh, we've covered everything about TIP. I hope you've got a good, solid understanding for how to do this, how you can use it as a competitive advantage, how you can get it out just kind of ahead of the curve, Get it to your realtor partners, you know, share it with them, either on mobile or share it through the email. Um, get it to your borrowers, you know, when when you have that first conversation with your borrower, this this should really be part of it. You know, as part of your value proposition is, you know, I I, I deliver a total cost analysis to every one of my borrowers because I want to make sure that they're educated before they make this huge decision. I want to make sure they understand the costs over time. I want to make sure that they understand where their their uh, their equity position is going to be in 10 years or whatever relates to their goals. But most importantly, I want to make sure that when you get your loan estimate, nothing looks unfamiliar to you. You're used to seeing this because I've already shown you all of this. You know, I've shown you tip, and I'm going to show you the five-year cost. When you do see these on your loan estimate, we can go back. We can go straight back to this presentation, and we can drill down on how those are how those are calculated. You know, when it when it uh, when it comes down to it, your position in educating early is just transparency. Like I said in the beginning, don't let somebody else explain it to your borrower. Don't let them hear it over the radio. You know, don't you know? Make sure it's you doing it, and you're going to have great success with it. All right, so I won't preach any more on that. But uh, any further questions on tip? Go ahead and enter those in the questions area, and I will certainly try and address those for you. Um, also, make sure you uh, you check out the handouts that we put out there. I know I pointed them out earlier, but if you haven't yet clicked on those, uh, these are just some some great pieces you can use. Three day closing disclosure rule. You know, if you have questions about, you know, what if you know what dates should correspond with each other. My closing date's Monday. My disclosures were due the preceding Thursday. So real real easy format. You know, when when do you mail the disclosures? You know, if there's a federal holiday in that three day period, add another day for it. Just some real um, easy. It's just a really easy way to, to remember where things are at. So I would print this out and put it up next to my desk. Now the other handouts are the video questions. So best practices for video and scripting. So you can see we've got we've got things like borrower scripts. How do you position yourself with your clients? Um, how do you coach your realtor agents? And then towards the bottom, we've got the video review checklist. Did I mention the name of the borrower? Did I endorse my referral sources? Did I repeat the top goals? Did I challenge? You know, all these are 
are great points where if you if you listen to your video, and again, it's hard to get all this in two minutes, right? So you want to make sure you're just barely touching on each of these, and and try and get it to a fluid point. You may you may actually determine that these uh, these first three are all one sentence for you. You know, it it very well could be. You know, you may you may combine a couple of these into another sentence. You may just touch very briefly on the options that you're showing, and then most importantly, give it a simple call to action at the end and be excited about working with them. That is so key to getting a solid video out. And you know, you've seen Jeremy Forcier on the on the different uh, coaching calls we've had, and one of the things that that makes him so successful with this. Obviously, he has a team around him helping him to produce these total cost analyses, but he does every one of the videos personally. You know, so he's doing you know hundreds and hundreds of videos per month, and it's it's very easy to like the guy over video because he's just got an infectious nature, and all he does, as a matter of fact, these were gleaned from his presentations. These points here, you know, how is my energy? Is the video two minutes or less? Does it align with the borrower and realtor's goals? You know, when you're doing your own video critique. You know, and, and you're fine tuning your presentation style. Keep this in mind and use it. It's a it's a real real solid advantage. Now, the final handout uh, was the talking points with borrowers. So this is um, this is actually trid talking points. So this this came from Jeremy Forcier as well. You know, CFPB wants to make sure 2007 never happens again. And that when families get into mortgage debt, they understand your options. So that's that's one of your value propositions, right? So these are great talking points with your borrowers. TIP helps you see how expensive a mortgage can be and how important your mortgage decision can be to building wealth with real estate. So great, great talking points. Download this guy, print it out too. Um, there's our video checklist again, so it's, all, it's on that page as well. Uh, so you have a single page area where you can kind of nail everything all in one. And then talking points with realtors. We gave you talking points with borrowers up at the top, but this is, this is geared towards the realtor and, and basically just this is how you, how you can deliver a solid value proposition to your realtor. All right, so I don't see any more questions in there. Uh, if you do have questions, please go ahead and type those into the questions area. Um, so I think we, since we have about eight minutes left, uh, let's see, what can we do in here? Ah, let's show you what it looks like when you're comparing best and worst case scenarios here. So I'm actually going to go in and I'm changing this report entirely. So I'm not going to show those guys. And I'm going to go in and overwrite one of my loans. Now. This is actually kind of a good teaching here as to, you know, how do you deal with, I've got four loans on a presentation, I want to show my borrower something else, I don't want to just modify the ones I have. You know, th those check boxes are <laughs> really critical. If you uncheck them, they don't show up in your analysis. So the case that I'm trying to do right now is I went from my tip presentation to showing an arm, and I'm actually going to change this one to be a worst case. So what I did, I unchecked these two boxes, and I'm going to go to that loan, I'm going to copy this one over it and then just change the scenario. So I will name this one 5-1 worst. Oops. Sorry, horrible typist today. And make sure anytime you're uh, showing an adjustable, you've got to have the acronym at least of ARM or adjustable somewhere in there. I know it's fixed for the first five years, but if you call this a fixed load, you are definitely out of compliance. So just keep that in mind. Oops, I need, to, uh, I need to copy. So my next step after naming it, use the copy button. I'm going to copy that best case scenario. And I'm going to choose worst. And I'm going to go back to best because I had actually customized this, and I'm going to just choose best again. Oops, there we go. Now let's see what we've got in our presentation. <laughs> Check it out. So you can see that in the five-year period and in the monthly area, these are exactly the same. Now, while there's a lot of blank on this presentation, this is a great talking point for your borrower. You know, when you're talking about an arm and what it could potentially do over time, you know, the fixed period is the same between those two arms, no matter what the adjustments are going to do afterwards. So when you're within that five-year period, you as a mortgage planner are going to be already contacting them with, with information about refinancing before that fixed period ends. You know, obviously, we've seen the index values have stayed pretty stable, so they might be okay just sticking with that loan for a good long time. In fact, I still know people with option arms that are doing really well with them because either they made more than the minimum payment or, you know, they're just kind of coasting on that, uh, that interest-only period. Maybe it, it already recast, but they had paid off enough principal to the point where the recast didn't hurt them. 
But when it comes down to it, there are people that can benefit from sticking with an ARM because that adjustability might keep them below where fixed rates are going to be in five, six years. Now, because we're within the five-year period, these both act the same, so there's zero savings between these two. But look at the difference in the 30-year mark. If we were to just hold these mortgages to the end of the term, $297,000 in interest versus 109 for best case. Obviously, a huge disparity between what these arms can do. We have a big difference between what the APR is, because that's based on our adjustment schedule. Our payments are the same for the first five years, but they are going to change. So we look at the best case, this one shows the payment going down. We look at the worst case, this one is going to show the payment steadily rising until it hits that cap payment. It's going to stay there for 275 payments. Now obviously there's a, a pretty big difference between the total interest percentage between these two. Um, so if you are going to show this, you're going to show a best and a worst. Maybe you do want to show a custom next to it. Now I get the question a lot where, you know, what if, what if my borrower only qualifies for one type of loan? Or what if they're only interested in one type of loan? You know, maybe I've, I've pitched a 30-year fixed on them because I know rates are great right now, but they have heard about, you know, an arm and they think that they can get a lower payment because we have a lower start rate and they're not necessarily worried about the volatility. So what do I show them to compare it against? I can compare it against a fixed loan so they can see what it does. Or I can take that same loan and just show them three different scenarios for it. You know, what happens if it does the worst case adjustment? What happens if it uh, does the best case? What happens with my prediction? You know, when it, uh, when it just kind of coasts for a little while, it has a little bump here and there, but doesn't really deviate too much from where the index values are at right now. So you can, you can give them that full education. You know, arms are risky. You know, that's just a simple fact. We don't know what it's going to do. We don't have a crystal ball that can predict what those index values are going to do. So why not show your borrower a couple of different variations? What's the worst it can do? What's the best it can do? What do I anticipate it's going to do? So if I want to do that, <laughs> again, I would just go in and I would go to one of those programs that I had unchecked. And then I'm going to use the copy button. So this is my adjustment prediction. Now, I probably wouldn't use the word prediction. That could get you in a little bit of trouble. Um, my adjustment strategy. And then I'll copy that, uh, that 5 1 worst. Hit OK. I'll go in and I'm just going to customize this to what I think it's going to do. So maybe at that first adjustment point, maybe I think it's going to go up a full point. Then I'm going to bring it up a half a point there. I'm going to kind of keep it level. Um, let me bring it down a quarter point now. And then I might schedule my adjustments a little farther out. So maybe month 180, something like that, bring it up another 2%. And then maybe at 240, bring it up another percent, something like that. Now once I've got those in there, we will now see my adjustment strategy. And this will change in just a second. There it goes. So my APR is right between these two. So I've got my worst case at 6.6, .6, my best case 3.2. Where do I think it's going to be? I think it's going to be right around 4.5. Now the other thing I can do to get rid of all this blank area here is push out my short term area a little bit further. Now watch what happens here. I go into my analysis screen and let's take a look at what it looks like in 84 months. As soon as I make that adjustment and trigger a save, we're going to see that this is going to adjust and we're going to start seeing some graphics there because these loans are going to act totally different after the 60-month 60 or 60 month period. Now, if I'm planning this from the beginning, I probably want to have this so it's, it's kind of got a rising effect, like cascading effect. So I might show the worst case. I might show my adjustment strategy the second and then the best case third so they can see what they look like. It's just kind of more, a little bit more visually appealing when you have things going in a, in a line. It's easier for the client to understand too. Uh, but you can see things have changed now. Obviously my numbers on the left haven't, but my savings at the 84 month period, you know, the worst case is going to cost the most. You know, my strategy right in the middle, you know, it's going to be about $6,000, $7,000 less than what the worst case could be. The best case, hey, it could be $11,000 less, but it's going to be somewhere in this range. And it's not going to deviate between that. It can't go above the max caps and it can't go below the floor. So this is a great way to just educate your borrower on, well, you know, what are the implications? What happens when it's the best case? How, what's your real total interest percentage going to look like? What does it look like if, God forbid, it just starts rising out of control and hits your cap? Well, you're going to have 148% total interest percentage over the life of the loan. But in a case like that, this shouldn't be viewed as a fear factor. It's really more of an eye-opener for the borrower that, 
there is potential for adjustment one way or the other after the fixed period. So part of my job as your, as your mortgage planner is I want to make sure that before that fixed period is up, we've got a solid idea of what index are, are predicted to do so that we can make a decision on whether you want to stay in that loan and, and you know, kind of roll the dice with the, with the rates or if we want to get you out of that loan just before, refinance you into a new fixed loan. As I said before, maybe fixed loan rates are, are significantly higher five years from now. That's the case. They may be better off sticking with that adjustable after the fixed period is over. All right, so it looks like we are right at 10. Um, oh, Taffy had a question. Uh, what are the best practices for maintaining different versions of the TCA, so having different links? So uh, that's actually that copy function I was showing you earlier. Once you have a, a specific presentation already and you want to prepare another one, just go to the copy analysis and you have two options here. You can copy it under the current client or under a new client. Now if you copy it under the current client, it's actually going to stack it so that when you, uh, when you go to search for that client name in your, in your client list, you'll see that he'll have multiple presentations under his name. And each of those presentations is completely unique. So they're not, not dependent on each other at all. Uh, the only part, the only dependency really is the first name. If you were to change the borrower's name on any one of the reports, it'll change it for all of them because those are tied together. But the analyses themselves, they, they will each have different links. They'll, uh, they can each have different videos on them. So you don't have to worry about it. You know, once I've copied analysis, if I change something like the video rates, terms, products, whatever, it's not going to affect the original. So you can feel free to copy these, copy these, copy these over and over again. And when you're doing that tip presentation, I would copy it to new clients. That way you can, you can specify which client this went to on every single occasion. All right, so great question. Uh, David's question, how do we adjust the order of the options in the presentation? I kind of knew this was coming. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, David. So there isn't a way to just reorder them. What you have to do is you have to use the copy button to move them around. So say, for instance, if I wanted to move you know, my, my adjustment strategies to what I was talking about where I have you know, the, the, the worst case first, I'm going to actually copy worst case into this first product slot. So I'll go to my first product slot, copy from, I'll copy worst case, and then I just need to rename it. So this is 5-1 arm worst. And then my adjustment strategy is already in the second position and we need best in the third position. So I'm going to go to my third one here, copy from, I'll copy from best, then I will just rename this guy. And then I'll go to my first screen of the presentation and just make sure I've got the one selected that I want to show. And what this is going to result in in just a moment here is we will see this, it's already, we'll see this change the order in just a moment here. In fact, I might want to just refresh it. So there we go. There's that cascade effect that I was telling you about where, you know, I'm starting with the worst case, I'm showing my prediction, and then I'm showing the best case. And now I've got this cascading savings and I've got a cascading interest in MI over time. So I've effectively moved these around and you may have noticed there, David, one of the things I needed is I needed one slot that I could use to copy into. So if you've already got four products and you want to completely rearrange all four products, you're going to have to redo the data, data entry on one of them because you need to use one of them as a copy slot to move around. But hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, I do get that question quite often. Um, the reason these can't just simply be reordered is that they're actually created dynamically. So when we, when we look at the screens inside of a product, for instance, especially on an arm, we, we have four screens and they are all dependent on each other and they kind of roll in a downward fashion here. So to reassign those to a different product slot, all the IDs that connect all these screens would need to be reassigned and it just doesn't quite work that way. So the best we can do is use that copy function to move products around until we're happy with the way they are. All right, well thanks again everybody for all the great questions today. I did record this call and if you want to check it out later, just click on help from Inside Edge and then the top left entry here, access our coaching call archive and you will see today's Thursday training up here just below the Rich Horn training. This is another way to get to our YouTube channel by the way, all these are published to YouTube. So if you ever need to search for different types of things, um, do, do control F on your keyboard when you're on the screen and it brings up a search function up at the top here 
when you do the search, it'll highlight your search result everywhere it's uh, everywhere it's at. Uh, Taffy, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to have you on these calls. Thanks for asking so many great questions. All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap for today. If you do have questions, you need a little bit of help with this, uh, send a note over to our support team, support at mortgagecoach.com. We can either direct you towards resources that are going to help you solve the problem, or you know, if you're sending us a presentation that you're having trouble with, we can look at that on the back end, and we can determine you know, what's going on with it and give you some advice on how to fix it. Um, and our, our support team is very fast via email. So we don't want you sitting in a hold queue forever. Shoot that email over. We'll get to you right away, and hopefully we'll get a solution out to you uh, very quickly. So with that said, have a wonderful day, everybody, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much.